Welcome in to Moving the Change, brought to you by Founders Federal Credit Union. I'm Kevin Thomas alongside Jarrell Hendricks. Got a great interview today for our ring season recap. A very special guest, the head coach of the 2023 2A state champion, Oceanside Collegiate Land Sharks, Chad Wilkes. Coach, how are you doing today? Doing good. How are y'all? Doing well and appreciate your time as always. If this is you guys first time tuning in, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, et cetera, at Moving Chains, our website, movingchains.com, podcast on Apple, Spotify, Google, and more. This was Coach Wilkes' second season as the head coach of the Land Sharks. They went 12-2 on their way to their first football state title in program history. Coach, folks didn't get, didn't get to watch you guys play. What would you say kind of was the identity of your team on offense and defense this season? Um, defense kind of stayed the same all year, I think. Extremely physical, um, you know, really, really good depth, kind of the, the entire – every unit was good, I think. We finished the year, we only gave up three touchdown passes all season, um, you know, so the back end was really good. But I think if you would ask the coaches, we'd probably say the strength of our team from a talent standpoint was really up front um, with the D-line and our linebackers. So, uh, yeah, just really good all the way through, aggressive. Um, you know, Coach LaPrad likes to blitz a good bit. We're not afraid to play man, um, which is things you don't always see in high school. Um, so we kind of get after it again, I think, really tough and physical and hard hitting and and all those good things. And then offensively, it changed a million different times, depending on which one of the four guys that started at quarterback was playing quarterback and which one of the six guys that started at running back was playing running back and which one of the seven offensive line combinations we had was playing offensive line that week. Um we started out the year throwing the ball a good bit and then kind of ended up moving more towards a little bit more conservative running the ball with our uh, main quarterback, whatever, going into the year, Edward riding back. We really kind of turned into where we were just kind of using him as like a, another second running back, I guess. And we're really doing a lot of option stuff. And we ran like true veer for the first time in my career and like some stuff like that. Um, and then once we got, once he got hurt and then the playoffs, we kind of did the exact opposite all the way to, dropping back 60 times in the state championship game, um, actual, actually 60 times. So it changed quite a bit. And, you know, we just went through so many injuries and so many different combinations of different starting starting lineups. And, I mean, really more than I've ever even seen in high school football. So it changed a lot. And our defense had to carry us for a lot of um, – through a lot of different uh, points in our season um, and, and was definitely the strength of our team. Uh, at the beginning, but I think obviously towards the end of the year, our, real, our offense really kind of found its found its groove with, with what we were doing and throwing the ball more, and um, ended up you know playing well for most of the state championship game. So, well, regardless of the personnel, coach, man, you guys scored thirty two on offense and eleven on on defense. You gave up eleven on defense throughout the year. Uh, you mentioned those changes, but you know we caught up with you mid mid season last year. Uh, but who kind of like really led you guys down the stretch? Like who are those players that you had to kind of, especially on offense, plug in and uh, you know really get you across the finish line to win that state championship? Yeah, well, two of the guys who were kind of our steady guys who were there all year, but then had to take a step were our two out. Uh, kind of mostly outside wide receivers, Gavin Gaspar and Will Virgilio. They were there all year. They were kind of the two guys who – probably the only two guys, really, on the whole starting 11, first starting 11 on offense that really never had to – never got hurt or, you know, never had to move around to pass what we already did. Of course, Will does move positions, but we were doing that all year. Uh, but once Edward went down and we kind of shifted more towards – Throwing the ball, those two guys really had to step up and, and take on a bigger role as wide receivers. And then, of course, Edward was our leading rusher as well. So Will had to take a lot of that responsibility um, playing more quarterback. And even for the first time through in the playoffs, he played a little bit of running back too to, to try to get some of that running rushing production that we lost with Edward. So those two guys did a great job and were with us all year. And then, you know, obviously I think to actually – get the job done, you know, Aiden Manavian coming in and making it happen and player of the game in the state championship. And, you know, again, dropping back 60 times, getting sacked 10. And, you know, it, it was, wasn't was an easy game for him to perform in against a super, super talented team. So for us to actually get the job done and end up landing on him as the quarterback for the, the last three rounds of playoffs, um, you know, obviously I can't say enough good things about the way he played and, and led the offense down the stretch and, and really – really made it happen for us in situations where a lot of guys um, 
a lot of much older guys wouldn't do the same. So, um, yeah, the, I would say those three guys really, really did a lot for us down the stretch. And, you know, the state championship game, I think their stats speak for themselves. You guys have a great coaching staff there at Oceanside. You already mentioned Coach LaPrade, but who are some other guys that have been there with you that really kind of helped you guys win that state title this year? Yeah, well, our other co-defense coordinator does a lot for our defensive fronts and run game stuff. Coach Salazzo, defensive line coaches, um, he's he's a guy that's really well known in, in the Charleston area, especially because he coached at the Citadel forever and and played for the Citadel and went on to, to coach at Georgia Tech in Maryland and, um, you know, had a career as a power five recruiting coordinator and defensive line coach. So he's got a ton of experience and does a great job. I think that it's it's really hard to – find anybody that is going to coach the technique and fundamentals of defensive line play better than him in high school football. Like, I just don't know where, I don't think it happens anywhere. Um, you know, he's, he's incredible with what he does with those guys and keeps them laser focused. And we stay locked in on the details of really everything, but, but especially defensive line and, and what he does with them. And, and he kind of really makes everybody, even everybody else on the coaching staff, he's made me a better coach by, um, the things that he does every day and the way that he focuses on those little details. We've tried to really do that throughout the whole program. Um, so he does a great job. And then the only other uh, holdover we had from the year before was our tight ends, H backs and JV head coach, coach um, Andrew Nehemiah. But we brought in a lot of great guys, Brent LaPrade, defensive coordinator um, and linebackers coach, DB's coach, James Pryor did a great job. Again, only gave up three touchdown passes all year. It's a pretty, it's a pretty good stat um, in 14 games. And, he did a great job with those guys. And then uh, Coach John Patterson, who's been the head coach at James Allen, been the head coach at Providence Day, came in to help us coach our offensive line. And he coached in college for a long time. And, again, did a great job with those guys, especially in pass protection. And, you know, some of the – we were running kids out there at times um, on the offensive line that didn't have very much experience at all, even in up until the state championship game. And, and we were still able to find ways to get the job done with those guys. And then wide receiver, Sam Hartman, you know, who's an Oceanside alum, his dad, uh, Dr. Mark Hartman, coached our wide receivers and and did a really good – obviously did a great job with them. I mean, you talk about the strength of strengths of our team. I mean, our wide receiver core was unbelievable. And, and they're basically all back. You know, they're all guys that we knew had never played before but needed to step up and – and they all did. And to see their development from game one up until, you know, their performances in the state championship game was incredible. And and Coach Hartman did an incredible job with those guys. Coach Edward Reinbach, you mentioned he went down your starting quarterback last year, um, you know, went to the state title game, started in that game for you guys there. Uh, goes down late in the season. You know, how vital was his leadership and his experience in bringing, you know, not only the offense, but also Aiden along so that he could be so confident, you know, during that playoff run for you guys? Yeah, he was incredible. I mean, there was no, like, I, he even before he had surgery, you know, he was right back in practice that Monday. Um his, his surgery came another week later. Obviously, we knew he was out for the year, so we're, there was no rush on his surgery. So we actually didn't have surgery until um, the Thursday before our second round game. But so he was right back at practice, even with an actively torn ACL. He had surgery on Thursday, then he was still right back to it. Um, you know, the next day and, and feeling good, and he was at practice every single day. He with with our sort of model and the way that we do things, and when we practice. You know, a lot of times we have coaches outside. So our quarterback's coach, who's another guy who did an incredible job, obviously, again, as you can see, uh, with Aiden and, and all year with Aiden and or with Edward. Um, and so a lot of times, you know, he has a real full-time job. Our quarterback's uh, coach does. So, you know, anytime that he's late for practice or something because something's coming up at work, which, you know, happens and something that we expect. I mean, Edward was right there and was literally running in deep quarterback drills at times when we needed him to. Um, and that's, you know, that's part of what makes Oceanside special. We have a lot of kids who who would do something like that. And Edward's especially one. And, um, yeah, I mean, he's, he's a great leader when he was healthy. He's a great leader when he was hurt. I mean, he's truly like I called, started calling him Coach Ed. I mean, he was truly like another coach once he got injured, um, even through practice, through the games and keeping those guys focused. And I don't think there was anybody happier about winning state than he was. Um, because, you know, he knows and, and we've told him how big of a role he played in that really since I've been here. You know, he's kind of been the ultimate leader since my first day on the job. And, and he's like the first kid that reached out to me when I got the job. And, 
And so, you know, I just really appreciate my relationship with him and what he did for our team. And you just couldn't ask for a better kid, a better leader. Um, it was really, really fun to watch going down the stretch there. You know, one thing, Coach, that really stuck out to me was how you guys responded to adversity all season long, whether that's with Edward going down and, you know, the last game of the year or losing Ben Britton minutes before the game or even falling behind early in the state title game. You guys kept persevering, kept battling back. You know, how have you been able to kind of instill that into your program and how proud are you of, you know, of your guys of how they able all able to always bounce back no matter what the situation is? Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's something that we are pretty intentional about, I think. Um you know, we coach hard. We, we coach hard. We work hard. We ask a lot out of our kids. We ask, we expect a lot out of them. Um, we really try to drive them every day to be the best that they can be. And, and that's past just on the practice field or just on Friday nights. I mean, we're doing the same thing in the weight room. We're doing the same thing in the film room. They are really, again, they're just, they're expected to perform at a very high level uh, for a lot of hours every day. And when you build that up over time, you know, kids will, tough kids, good kids will, will be able to take that and, and then become that themselves and get used to adversity. You know, if, if, if practice is hard, like we, we always want to make practice harder than the game. So if practice is hard, you know, and they face adversity in practice every day, once they see that and that shows up in games, um, they know how to handle it and they know that they can perform anyway. And, so it's just it's a lot of effort that that we put in as coaches to try to make sure that we are putting them in an environment where things are going to be tough. And and we tell people all the time that Oceanside is not an easy place to play. It's not a place that everybody needs to play. There's, you know, I, anybody, you know, eighth graders or whatever, because we don't have a feeder middle school, you know, just being a charter school. Um, you know, when eighth graders apply and get in or whatever, and we have that first parent meeting with all the eighth graders um, in the summer, I literally tell them that like, hey, you know, this might not be the decision for you if you're not really, really willing to be great and willing to be great all the time, 24 seven. And so we put in a lot of effort into that. And it takes a special kind of kid to at 14, 15, 16, 17 years old to be able to take that environment and to use it to better themselves. Not everybody is willing to do that, which is okay, you know, but our kids are willing to do that. And I think that shows up on the field. You know, I, it's, it's not a secret. We don't have a ton of really fast kids. We don't have a ton of big kids. We, we don't, you know, I know <laughs> there's this perception that we do, but we don't, I mean, we literally had, uh, zero kids that actually played the state championship game because Ben didn't get to play. But if you include Ben and one of our offensive linemen that got hurt, hurt earlier in the year, we had zero kids that could bitch 250 pounds playing the state championship game. Zero. Like, I don't, you know, zero. And that's, that's not a lot, you know. But we get by because our kids are going to be disciplined. They're going to be tough. They're going to be physical. They're not going to fold to adversity. We're down 14 to nothing in the state championship game. In the lower state championship game, we had given up 21 unanswered to go down to 21-14. And, you know, people ask me in interviews, they're like, what do you say to people at halftime? It's like, yeah, we might, you know, get after them at halftime a little bit or whatever. But it doesn't even get to that point. You know, our players are going to are on the sidelines doing it themselves, you know. So, and that comes from all the work and everything that they face every single day and that they put in just by being – students at Oceanside and being part of our program. So, um, yeah, I mean, I know it's a long-winded answer, but I am – that's the thing I'm most proud of. I mean, that is the thing I'm most proud of in our program, that we do – that we put kids in situations where they can absolutely be their best and we don't accept anything but their best at any point. And, um, yeah, so that's something I'm really, really proud of. And that's the only way we win. Good Lord, that is the only way we win. Coach, let's get to one of the kids that I can safely assume probably can't bench 250 pounds. That's your starting quarterback in that game, freshman Aiden Manavian. No, he can't. Um, nope, not <laughs> even close. Not even close. <laughs> but, yeah, just, uh, you know, it's ultimate team game football is. Um, so, don't want to discredit any of those guys because it took everybody's effort to, to hoist that trophy. But he was definitely the star, you know, and the story of the game. What did you guys see? You know, I'm, I'm sure he's playing JV earlier in the year, uh, you know, because you got a senior quarterback. What did you guys see that gave you the confidence in him, you know, in his preparation in practice and things like that to know that he could perform on such a big stage? 
Yeah, so he's got a really interesting kind of path with us. You know, we knew as soon as we as soon as we had him in the summer and summer workouts, you know, it was very obvious from the first throw how good he was going to be. And, and a lot of my friends in coaching have knew knew who he was back in the summer because you know I would a lot of my coaches that I've talked to very often, you know, I, I would tell them about him and, and knew he was going to be special. But you know, we've got a senior returning captain who took us to a state championship game and as somebody that can Edward, you know, more than just his physical ability. I mean, we put the entire offense on him. I mean, pass protection calls, all the RPOs we do. And it, we, there's a lot of reads and there's a lot of stuff and it was, it's a hundred percent on him. And, and so there's just a lot going into that, that it really wouldn't have mattered how good anybody coming in was ever going to be the quarterback because of, you know, he's, he's the whole offense is kind of on his back. Um, going into it so he started Aiden started out on JV and we have we got a big quarterback room you know we got a bunch of quarterbacks we had probably nine uh, going into the summer this year in, in all four grades so it's a big quarterback room um, and we've got other like we've, we've got other really good quarterbacks and and so we've had a 10th grader on on JV that was going to be the starting quarterback and we had three action they were all going to rotate so they were going to go first, second, third quarter. Fourth quarter is going to be whichever one of those played the best in the first three quarters. Win or lose, that's how we we're going to do it. Um, you know, they're all good players and deserved to be good. But we knew Aiden was going to be good. So we play South Florence, who has a really good JV team. Um, and uh, South Florence beat us in JV the year before easily. Um, and so we go into that game, and it's it's zero to zero. Um, Aiden's got the second quarter because our 10th grader had the first quarter. And uh, – by halftime, then that quarter's 28 to nothing Oceanside, four, four touchdowns for Aiden in a quarter. Um, so right then we we're like, okay, you know, he's too good for JV essentially. And and he was. Um, so we actually moved him up to varsity then and told him that he was going to have a chance to compete for that second uh second string job at quarterback behind Edward. And um, you know, and, and Edward knows this. If Edward didn't play well or anything, you know, he 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 had a chance to compete um if we weren't getting the production that we wanted to out of that quarterback position so we moved him up to to varsity before carolina forest edward plays the game of his life we go on a 99 yard drive that is all on edward's back and he does a great job so aiden you know never plays in that game well then aiden breaks his wrist then so then aiden's out for almost throwing hands so he's out for a while but he comes back and gets cleared with a cast on his right hand and he actually plays against somerville's jv at safety with a cast on his hand, because he's also he would be one of our starting safeties probably um, if 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 he uh, didn't wasn't so good a quarterback. Obviously, he's one of our most physical kids. He's not scared of anybody. So he plays against Somerville on JV again at safety, and thank God he didn't get hurt in that game. <laughs> um, but so he plays that game, and then obviously once you know Edward goes down, or once he gets back healthy, he's back on varsity playing quarterback, and then Edward goes down, and we called all the guys in, and and we've got three guys who can really play and that we felt comfortable with even past that. Like I said, we got a big room. So um, called them all in, essentially said, hey, we're going to grade you out every day at practice. We're going to grade you out every game. Whoever has the best grade every is go who's going to play every week. And and that, you know, was pretty consistently Aiden, obviously, and that allowed us to leave Will at wide receiver and, and let Will do his thing. Um, and But, yeah, I mean, the, the we knew – Really knew in the summer how good he was going to be. And then obviously that first JV game, four touchdowns in a quarter, it was kind of clear that he was, you know, really that level was probably too low for him. So at no point in time is he did he surprise us, even in the state championship game. Like as coaches, we kind of always knew that he could do that. Um, you know, I've talked to Coach Barnes at Sumter and we we talked quite a bit. And I told him the night before the state championship game, I was like, we're pretty much going to throw it every play. So we got a really good quarterback. We feel really good about doing that, and and we felt like our receivers had an advantage, and and that's what we did. Um, he's a really, really, really special player. I can't, I can't over exaggerate how good he is. I really can't. You know, I did tell him after state championship game. I said, now you know, for the next four months, I'm going to spend all my time making sure you don't think you're good. To you, we got to level you oh, out a oh, little. Yeah. Got to do that. But in all reality, he is. He's he's special. I can't say enough good things about him. He is he's incredible. I'm jealous of him. I'm jealous. I when I was in ninth grade, my God, I sure certainly couldn't do anything like that. So um, yeah, he's impressive. Yeah, 360 plus and two TDs was uh was ten pretty sacks. Bad. Ten sacks. Kept getting up. Yeah, I was ten telling sacks. Drill during the ball game. Uh, we really noticed, I guess, the third quarter 
I think he threw a touchdown pass. Then he, you know, he had a big first down run. He started, he was feeling it because yeah, he did some poses, you know, signal first sure. down. I was like, all right, he's starting to kind of get his feet his feet underneath him now. So that was really yeah. uh really neat to see in that ball game. But coach, you know, we talk about the offense and how you guys have played play great with Aiden there, but the defensive side of the ball too, you really only gave up, you know, two big drives in that ball game. It felt like the other ones are kind of some short field stuff. Miles Robinson all over the field, you know, the big play, Max Mormon, the pick six. You know, how how did you see you guys be able to stop a high powered offense like Greg going into the ball game, or did they even kind of play a little better? And you thought, and you, thought you might on defense in that game. Um, yeah, I mean, we knew what Gray was and what their strengths were for sure. We, yeah, I mean, I don't think any of us thought we were going to shut them out or anything. I mean, I thought that we could be. I certainly thought we could be competitive. I'd say probably kind of went how it went. Um, you know, they hit us with the two long balls. Um, that I think that's probably what I expected you know, to really get into the details of the game. I mean, I would have guessed maybe they were going to score what they were going to score or something like that, whatever. You know, I knew we could compete, but I knew how good they were. I would have guessed they would have been able to run the ball better than they did. Um, and and I'd have guessed we'd have done a better job on some of those deep balls than we did. Because, again, we hadn't given up that against anybody all year. You know, Louisville has this great receiving core, um, you know, with Deion Brown and those guys. And, and you know, they weren't able to, to do anything like that to us. So, you know, I guess the way it happened probably surprised me, but, you know, we obviously have a lot of faith in our defense, but we know how good Gray is. And Gray definitely had a speed advantage in some spots um, for sure that, that we knew was going to hurt us. Um, you know, but, but again, other than those two big plays that I wish we could have gotten, um, you know, because it required us to do some stuff on offense that, you know, we might not have had to do and might not have been as tight as it was if we could have, you know, kind of kept those two plays from happening. And they were plays that I really felt like, you know, those kids had, and those kids will tell you they made those plays all year, um, you know, so, but I tell them, hey, we won. So <laughs> I don't care, whatever, uh, you know, but, but I, I, I wish we could have been a little bit more competitive, um, you know, on some of those plays, but through the course of the game, a team that's as good as gray is going to get theirs, you know, that they're not just, you're not going to go into a game like that and just shut them out. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of the way they played. I'm proud of what we did not having been, I mean, people don't realize what that with a school like ours and the size of our team, you know, you lose Ben, that's a lot of positions you lose, you lose your left tackle. So that means your left guard has to play left tackle now for the first time you lose your defensive tackle who plays defensive end in the odd front. So now that also means you're losing, two spots on two different fronts and that guys that haven't played a whole lot are now all of a sudden playing or you're moving your defensive end inside to, to take that spot. And then his backup goes into defensive end. So there's just a lot of different moving parts. You know, it's not like, you know, school our size, we're not just going to have a pure two platoon across the board. So what that defensive line did and that defensive front did, and there's a couple guys, Cooper Rowe, Travis Anderson, who Cooper Rowe didn't start all year. Travis Anderson hadn't started since Carolina Forest, who just all of a sudden, like, hey, you're in the game, state championship, go get it done. And they both played great. They both played great. You know, one's a 10th grader, one's a junior. These aren't old guys who have had a lot of experience and they just get thrown into the fire. They had no idea when they woke up this morning that they were going to play maybe any, you know, because Ben never came off the field. So they just, they did an incredible job. Again, I think our physicality really made a difference in the run game. You know, Miles was, was putting it to him pretty early. Um, you know, which is what he does. And and so I think that our physicality, you know, was able to sort of control their run game for, for large portions of the game and, and really proud of the game plan that we had. And, and we did enough. We did enough. And against a good team like that, that's that's all you'll take. So, Coach, we, we talked about the offense, talked about the defense and your assistance. Let's go back to that game. Late fourth quarter, about two minutes left. Guys are lining up for a 43-yard field goal. Uh, Coach Holmes calls a timeout on the other side. You know, I guess to ice the kicker there. You guys come back out, go for it, complete it down to the one-yard line, and uh, punch it in on the next play. What led to the change of that decision? And, uh, you know, what did you see in your guys to know that you were going to be able to convert and, uh, you know, just take over the football game at that point? Yeah, so, I mean, I was 100%, you know, going to kick it for sure. Um, you know, as well within our kicker, Nate, who's also one of our starting corners, he's a really great player, um, as well within his range. Um, and, you know, he he doinked the the one earlier in the game, and which would have been good on a high school goal post, by the way. But, you know, so but we got a lot of confidence in him. He doesn't, 
he doesn't miss a whole lot of kicks. And, you know, he's a starting corner, so he's in the flow of the game. He's not going to be nervous. You know, everything's good. So we were definitely going to kick it. And we knew we had a play that we felt really, really good about that we needed based on what they had done on second and third down um, on that drive. And, you know, I just had it in my mind, if we can kick this now, you know, I felt good about them not being able to score a touchdown, you know, forcing them to make a kick or something to send in overtime. And I knew I had that same play that we ended up calling on the fourth down. You know, I was going to keep them keep it in my back pocket for overtime. And, you know, once they called the timeout, I was just walking out on the field and I was just like, you know, I just that play. There's really no need to save it, you know, because we could literally go win it right now. And I really wasn't thinking that way initially. I was thinking just more conservatively which is kind of rare for me. I generally, I'm pretty aggressive when it comes to going for it on fourth down and stuff and going for two and all that. Um, you know, but it just hit me. It's like, why would I be conservative now? You know, we've, we've gotten this far and obviously the, 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 the past game's rolling, you know, we knew that that play to will with Aiden was going to be there. And so, yeah, just kind of just something clicked in me. It's like, we're just going to be aggressive. We can win it now. And, and we knew based on the way that they were playing, the previous two concepts we ran, we felt great about it. Kind of knew it was going to be there. Um, Will did a great job, you know, with the catch. He actually, he didn't run the route perfectly and it got, it was closer than it needed to be. Uh, but I didn't do a good enough job of, of really telling him exactly how we needed to, to adjust that route a little bit. But um, yeah, but it, it, it worked out obviously. And, and that's just knowing how great Aiden and Will are. I mean, those are two, those are two special guys and, and really everybody that game, a lot of guys had their best game and, and stepped up when it mattered. But those are two kids that throughout my whole career, you know, I, I haven't had too many kids that I would say I trust to go execute a play in a football game more than those two guys. Um, I mean, they're, they're as good as I've, they're as good as I've ever had and never been around and in that moment. That's, that's nothing for them. That is nothing for them. They're guys that have the right mindset and the right attitude. I knew they wouldn't be nervous. So, um, yeah, just kind of went back to what I usually do, which is, you know, most of the time people around me complain that I don't kick enough. So, you know, that time it, it worked out. Dan Campbell over here. Oh, well, <laughs> he, he might go a little too far. Um, he might go a little too far. But yeah, uh, throughout my career, I've definitely been a guy, you know, once we cross the 50, we're not going to punt a whole lot. You know, I, I've been at 1A schools where there's not a ton of great kickers, you know, so we going for two a lot so yeah it, coach like i mentioned earlier this is the first you know football state title in other side history you guys have won several other ones in other sports and whatnot but what does that do for i guess kind of maybe solidifying the work that you guys have done and kind of really putting oceanside on the map as you know not a a good program but hopefully one of the premier programs now in the state yeah i mean that's that's the goal that's the vision um since i've come here you know i tell people all the time my interview here was was the best interview that that I felt like from the school side, you know, I, I felt like even just through the interview process, I felt so comfortable with the administration and and the, just the culture and, and everybody here about what they wanted the football program to, to be um, and, and what it was initially designed to be all, all the way going back when Sam Hartman came and, and Chad Greer came. And, and so I felt so comfortable about coming here that that they wanted what I wanted. And, you know, you don't always necessarily, you know, everybody wants to win, but not everybody wants to, to do everything it takes and put in the amount of effort that it, that it really takes to, to be successful and to be successful at a really high level. So the vision coming here was always to try to eventually, and again, this is years down the road. I'm not one of those guys like, oh my God, we're going to be, you know, playing on ESPN tomorrow. I mean, I'm talking about 10, 15, 20 years down the road, whatever that is, but that is the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is to be that. Um, at Oceanside and to have Oceanside be a national program. Um, but that is going to take these small, small steps, more than just winning one state championship. But in that interview, it's something that I talked about with the administration. And I think, you know, it's probably, it has a lot to do with why they hired me, but those steps towards getting to that point. Well, the first one is we need to be the best team that we can be in our own classification, in our own state. You know, we can't even dream about going out of state or doing these things where we're talking about being a national program if we're not even the best program in our own classification, in our own state. So that's kind of the first thing. And one state title doesn't do that either. You know, it's going to take multiple, two, three, start building on some of those where we're winning them in 2A and now we're in 3A. So doing that same thing. And it's going to take winning 
multiple in 3A and then whatever happens from there and trying to build out from that. And then once we do that, it's going to be about beating whoever is in the state. That's going to be about starting to be considered and playing, but also eventually getting to where we can play and compete and beat the Dutch Forks and all the Somerville and, and all of those schools who are the absolute premier, regardless of classification, the premier schools um, um, in our state. And, and we're certainly not there yet. We want to, but that's where we want to get to, but it's going to take certain steps with, with what we're, what they're doing. And, you know, we, Dutch Fork, we haven't put out ours yet, but Dutch Fork put out their schedule. You know, we're going to play them this year. And and that's just, that's the start of what we're trying to do. And when we release our schedule, it's going to be, there's some other really, really, really good teams on there that aren't in South Carolina that are going to be tough. And and that's just playing those guys and 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 getting to the point where we can see what that looks like on the field and and seeing what that takes to, to beat those teams is, is a part of it. But None of that happens, and none of that's going to be the case if we can't win state championships in South Carolina. That's the first thing. We need to be the best school in our own classification, then be the best school in the state. Then we can worry about going out and trying to be better than other people and be known on the national stage. But, again, that's going to take that's going to take way more than one state championship. That's going to take way more than two years. These are things that, for us, th- these are 10 years down the road that we're trying to aim and we're trying to do it in the most reasonable, smart way that we can do it. You know, again, I I know I've heard coaches get jobs and just automatically, you know, they just say things, right. And, and that's a common thing. They just say, we're going to be this and we're going to be that. And we're and and, and that's not me at all. When I say what we want to be, we're talking about so far down the road, like we got to worry about right now, all we care about, is being the best team that we can be and trying to win the 3A football state championship next year. That's it. That's what we're worried about. Yeah, we're playing Dutch Fork next year. That's that's besides the point. You know, that's to get us prepared for the 3A playoffs next year. You know, that's that's what we're focused on right now. And if we can do that and do that consistently, you know, which is what we're trying to do, then we can start taking those next steps. And maybe, you know, years from now, we can have Dutch Fork on the schedule and, and beat them. Man, I love perfect segues doing interviews. You talked about winning multiple state championships, and you have won multiple state championships, two as a player, one as a coach. Uh, what are the different feelings that you receive as winning a championship as a player? And then, you know, that feeling that you had in early December as a coach with Oceanside this year. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 different, you know, as a player, obviously. It's, it's your one, it's like the only thing in life. You know, when I was in ninth grade, when we won the first one, which I was a bench warmer. I mean, I didn't play in the game. I was just there, you know, but scout team or whatever, getting killed by Cliff Matthews every day, Um, you know, but, but like when you're in it, that's, that's all that Like, I didn't know that there was a world outside of Sherrill high school football. Like that is the only thing I care about. Like life was Sherrill high school football to me, you know, so that feeling of, of, of winning and, and being successful with your friends and and the people that you grow up with and the people you care about in the town. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of pride in, in our football program back then. And, you know, I was one of those kids, I grew up going to every straw game, even before I was in high school. Like I just, like I always loved high school football and, and loved straw was proud of our town. And so that's a specific feeling that you get, you know, that can't ever be replaced and is always going to be different. Like there's nothing, you know, in college, I think one of those years, whatever, we lost to Montana State, we made a deep run in the playoffs. And and even if we'd have won an FCS National Championship, wouldn't have come close to comparing to, to what that feeling was like, you know, as a player in high school. It just – I don't think you could ever recreate that. But the, the on the flip side of that, what you get as a coach and what even I would have said – what I knew at the time even in high school and dreaming of being a coach because that's what I wanted to be, you know, when – when you're the head coach, you know, you, you've got, you've got a lot of impact on, on the program and the game and, and how it goes. Like I said, when I was in ninth grade, I didn't even play in the game, you know? So it's, it's, it's just different. You know, I feel like obviously as a head coach, you I had much more of an impact and much more, I'm much more of, of a reason or whatever that, that we won this one, you know, obviously I think by the nature of it. So, you know, that's a feeling too. And that was always a dream of mine, even as a, as a player and as a kid of wanting to be a head coach and winning a state championship. So they're two completely, completely different feelings. Um, you know, I wouldn't trade either for the other. 
you know, I, I can't, we, we still talk. I still got, you know, friends that I grew up with are still my best friends today. And we still, anytime we get together, like all of our wives know, it's not going to take, but 30 seconds before sure all high school football from the years 2004 to 2010 start getting talked about. So, you know, that's still going to be the case. And that's something that I'm always going to be super, super proud of and, and how special that time was. And, and it was really special. We were, we were really freaking good back then. And it was really cool oh, yeah. to, to be oh, a yeah. part of that as a player, but you know, to do as a coach too. And it's, it's really special. And the other thing I'd say too, is I always knew how much, you know, I, like I always knew it was like, if I ever want to say championship, I'm going to cry like a baby, it, you know, as a coach, I always knew that, you know, I always knew that I'd, I'd cry like a baby, which I did. But what, you know, I didn't know until going through it and now you get older and, you know, you care so much more about the kids themselves than you do. Your, like I said, like back then it was just, you know, all you care about Shaw high school football. Now, you know, life is so much bigger than that. And, you know, you're really trying to impact kids and do something special with, with kids. And what I didn't really realize until we won it is how much, like how special it was getting to see how happy our players were, you know, cause like I said, we worked really, really hard and to see that pay off and to see just the joy and the emotion and the relief and, and everything and getting to see them, you know, reach their goals after working so hard. That's something that I didn't know because we've always been disappointed after every season, you know? So I knew what the sad part of that was like. I, I know what it's like to watch kids cry because they didn't get to accomplish their dream. Never got to see that where your players are celebrating all their hard work. And that's something I didn't, you know, hadn't ever experienced before. That was, that was more special than anything, you know, and I wouldn't trade that for, for the world. The last one here for you, Coach. Obviously, you know, you won the state titles. I'm sure you'll remember that. But outside of just winning that game, what will you remember most about this team and this season really as a whole? I mean, it's something that we've already talked about, the the adversity that we went through. I mean, it's it's un, I, it's, it's unheard of. You know, I don't know how many people have – how many teams, good, bad, you know, state champions or, or not, that went through – the amount of adversity that we went through this year. I mean, it really is. I, I did up our thing for our, our uh, team banquet and, and everything, which was great. And I literally sat down and counted all the different offensive line combinations we had, the different starting running backs and how many quarterbacks we had, and how many kids scored touchdowns and, you know, all these crazy numbers that I think are pretty unheard of, you know, for us to, to go through all of that and, and come out as champs at the end, even in the game, right. Go down 14 to nothing. And, Things, we're now 14 nothing with the ball in our own one-yard line. Like, things aren't going well. And, you know, this team is not the most talented team I've ever coached. You know, my last year, we had a lot of guys that could bench more than 250 pounds. A lot. We had a lot of dudes that can run or more dudes that can run, you know. Um, you know, so this is not the most talented team I've ever coached um, at all. But the way that they faced adversity and the mental toughness that they have, I think it was proven out to be by far the best that I've ever coached. And I've had a lot of good teams, you know, and a lot of really good players and a lot of really tough kids. But as a group, the way they came together and the way they didn't let anything phase them is it's it's incredible. Like, I, I mean, as a sick for a group of teenagers to be able to do what they did and to have that laser sharp focus, no matter what was in front of them, is it's incredible. And, and I've never seen anything like it. When, when we won state in high school, we did not have to face the adversity that these guys faced. We had. NFL players on the team that never got hurt and they played the whole time and we beat everybody all the time. And, and it was great. I mean, and that's really how it went. And, and so for us to do what we did with, with that year, like I said, I mean, we literally had four different starting quarterbacks, six different starting running backs, seven different offensive lines, starting offensive line combinations. Um, I think 16 total players scored a touchdown, um, which is about half the roster, you know, a little bit less than half the roster. I mean, it's, it's really, it's pretty, you know, multiple freshman score. It's 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 uh, it's it's three different freshmen score touchdowns, you know, meaningful touchdowns. So it's it's really crazy what we what we went through and 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 the kids just the entire time laser focused. We never had to worry about whether they were going to get distracted by anything, and and that's as much as as them going out and doing it. It didn't take the coaches, you know, screaming at them or you know trying to keep you know they just they have that mindset because they're kids that choose to come to Oceanside, you're going to be a kid that's going to be that way, kind of naturally, and, and if you're going to stick it out anyway. So they're, they're those kinds of kids, and, and I could not be more proud of what they did. It's just pretty crazy. 
Well, this has been great. I want everyone to go check out Coach Wilkes and in the Land Shark program on Facebook and Twitter. I do a great job on social media, posting highlights and clips and whatnot. I can't wait for that schedule to get dropped here soon, too, Coach. That'll be a lot of fun. But like I mentioned, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, et cetera, at Moving Change, movingchange.com, podcast on Apple, Spotify, Google, and more. Moving the Change, brought to you by Founders, Federal Credit Union, Drill. Anything for Coach, we'll let him go today. Well, Coach, we want to thank you again. You're always gracious with your time. I feel like we've had a front seat on this journey, your, your time at, at – at, uh, at Oceanside there, you know, from catching you after practice and that new hire interview until now. So congrats on the state title game. Uh, we look forward to, you know, catching up with you again next year. Wish you continued success. Next year is going to be a lot different challenge, but I know your your guys are going to be up to it. And uh, just thank you, as always, for, for joining us on the program. Yeah, appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for everything y'all do for South Carolina High School. Y'all really keep the excitement alive, which we need more of these days. Really appreciate y'all. Well, appreciate that, Coach. Look forward to catching up soon, all right? Appreciate it.